Hello everyone, I'm Becky and welcome to the first episode of Victorians Exposed. Now when people think of the vibrator, they generally tend to think of sex. And interestingly, when you do a Google search for the vibrator, you generally tend to come up with this. However, what a lot of people don't know is that the first vibrator ever invented actually looked like this. The vibrator was actually a Victorian invention and was invented by British physician Joseph Mortimer Granville in 1880. And what's even more surprising is that the vibrator was originally used as a medical instrument on hysterical women. Now in Victorian times, hysteria was deemed to be one of the most dangerous diseases that a woman could have and was really a threat to the entire Victorian conception of femininity. However, the history of hysteria goes back a lot further than that. The first Western medical definition of the disease was first found around about the 5th century BC. And stimulating treatments for hysteria, such as vulva massage, can be found as early as the 1st century AD. However, we know now that what was then interpreted as hysteria was actually just normal female sexual expression. And it wasn't even until 1952 that hysteria was no longer an approved medical diagnosis. Doctors had a lot of differing opinions as to the best way to treat hysteria, but if there's a problem, man will generally try and use technology to solve it. Medical devices used for treating hysteria evolved over the centuries, accumulating in the first electromechanical vibrator built by Mortimer Granville in the 1880s. This invention was revolutionary for doctors. What was previously a long and tedious manual procedure could now be done in just a few minutes. And yes, this procedure is exactly what you're thinking. Doctors would bring women to orgasm, or hysterical paroxysm, in order to release the pent-up energy that was thought to be caused by hysteria. And what you also might be thinking is how the hell did this manage to go on? How was this procedure even accepted by Victorian society? Well the answer to this is actually quite simple. In Victorian times there were differing interpretations of women's sexuality, but it generally ended up in two categories. The first one being that women simply did not feel sexual pleasure at all, therefore how can such a procedure even be sexual? And the second was that women could only feel sexual pleasure when a penis was involved. The models that they used were solely for external purposes, therefore no penetration, therefore no sexual pleasure. Even though Mortimer Granville was the inventor of the vibrator, he didn't actually believe that it should ever be used on women. The vibrator was originally intended to treat muscular and skeletal hand pain in men. Other doctors, however, had a bit of a different plan. Whilst the vibrator wasn't used en masse by medical professionals, it also wasn't that rare an occurrence. It's easy to understand why a treatment such as this that had no fatalities and a lot of satisfied patients would be so popular. And the success of the vibrator meant that by 1905 there were portable versions that doctors could use to make house calls. Shockingly, these procedures actually continued up until the 1920s. It was only when physicians and doctors had a better understanding of female sexuality, coupled with quite a few vibrators appearing in certain pornographic films, that the procedure was removed from doctors' offices. After that, the vibrator seemed to disappear, and would only reappear in the 1960s. At this point, it was openly advertised as a sex toy, and the vibrator's unrivalled success in creating hysterical paroxysms led to it becoming one of the most popular sex toys in the entire world. If you're interested in learning more about the history of the vibrator, I recommend The Technology of Orgasm by Rachel Maines. Her account is witty and very readable, and goes into some of the final details of the device's history. However, if you'd prefer something a little bit more lighthearted, I definitely recommend the film Hysteria. Whilst not being completely historically accurate, the performances are brilliant and it is overall hilarious. If you're interested in learning a little bit more about the more eccentric side of Victorian history, remember to subscribe to Victorians Exposed, and I'll see you next time.